I went over and played in Cardiff, Wales, in the English EIHL, the English English Ice Hockey League, and uh, it was it was a blast. But you you at least have options. Whereas like NFL, if there's not that, although they are creating the XFL back up again, mm-hmm. or you can go CFL, but CFL doesn't pay nearly as much. And as, they have way different rules too. Way different rules. Although Wider the Rock's fields. trying to combine it all. The Rock is dude. Mean. The Rock, he's Heck, a special. He might guy. do it though. He really might. He There's one don't. guy who he, could. He, he touches. Yeah, he and, turns it into that. And shit. I think the CFL is struggling as far as money. But going back to the hockey thing is, is you know when I signed, usually there was a NHL team with an AHL affiliate, and even some of them had an ECHL affiliate. Where I started out my professional career with the Wheeling Nailers in Wheeling, West Virginia. So. Um, Wheeling you know, nails. That's something, dude. Some of these yeah. names are awesome. So it, 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 you could basically be as bad at hockey once you hit pro and you're going to find somewhere to play. So it's kind of nice for, <laughs> for actual money. That's for what I'm saying. Cause like in the le- it's like in the NFL, you bring up a practice squad year or like CFL or anything like that. It's kind of like you don't necessarily count them as like pro years. Like guys won't allow you to count them as like pro years. Yeah. But it seems like in hockey, if you play in any of these professional yep. leagues, yeah. you get to count them as like they kind of take on the definition of pro, like pro is being paid to do a service. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's what you do. Yeah. But like Europe's like no joke. You can you go over there and they pay you obviously less, but my buddy have a buddy that plays in Germany and like his house is paid for, his car is paid for, yep. like he has no bills. So everything they give him is gravy. Like and it, I, and in and in most cases as at least as a hockey player, when you go over there, it's tax free money. Like they cover the taxes somehow. So they like if your contract's like a hundred and they have to pay twenty thousand in taxes. They, they, they have to cover the taxes. That's and then crazy. and then I've also talked to to buddies who um who have played in Russia, including Wit, and in some cases they're dropping off like monies and money in duffel bags to the rink. Oh, I love there's, there's guys who have had to yeah. cut over. Especially open. in Russia. That's like the, so that's Russia, like such a Russian oh, thing the, to happen. Europe too. League is the SEC of yeah. of uh hockey. You know, you kind of just, yeah. there's no rules there, yeah. it is a it is a free-for-all like there are stories of guys having to like cut a, goalies cutting open their pads and uh, stuffing the money in their pads and, re, and re-sewing them oh no uh them giving out the money before practice and then you go on the ice and you come back and the money's gone out of your stall and it's like too bad so sad uh stories of guys oh too bad so what do you mean like the money's in there and then they go to practice and they, 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 they they would hand out everybody's money before so practice. wick gets money you go into his locker you steal his money it's like too bad well so the, 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 it's, it's all mom brand over there everything there there was a there hockey was, leagues are mob the, run the, oh in, in the khl there are insane khl stories probably the best professional stories i mean we've had guys uh we had a guy named tim stapleton come on our podcast and uh he was he was injured and he was trying to play through it and they were on a long road trip and it got to the point where he's like hey my groin's fucked up like, i so he they're like all right fine they sent him back to the town to get rehab and not continue the road trip because it's just another body to pay for hotel rooms yada yada and he'd been noticing that every time he would come back from road trips, it, he, he thought there was like a ghost in his place because the furniture was always moved a little bit. Well, he comes home early from the road trip. He opens up the door and it's bolted and finally knocks. And the guy who'd rented him the place was living there with his family when he would go on the road. <laughs> so, so, so he ends up spending the night on the couch with this whole guy's so whole family. The guy's fit. like, come on in. Yeah, come on. Right. You, you caught me. You caught me. Oh, man. It, 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 what get, the dude, fuck, Get somebody dude. who played in the KHL, an old school guy. I think the league has progressively cleaned up a little bit by little just because people were hearing the stories and it was hard for them. to Because get of the in. internet? Yeah, because yeah, because of yeah, social media. Of yeah. of yeah. social media. So, uh, but uh, what was another one? Oh, like uh, guys having to open up a bank there to put their money in. The next thing you know, they go there and like the bank no longer exists, and guys being out of of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions. There is, um, uh, they would do this Russian gas sometimes. Uh, day of games where it would they would get they would get the vitamins. Like needles stuck in him. Like Wit, Wit one time did the vitamins, and he's like, "Biz, I've never felt so good on the ice in my entire life. I don't know what I, I don't know what was being put so in they, me." No joke yeah. testing over there. Oh no, it's it, they. They had an owner at one point where he he was straight mob, and he would always get like three or four fighters. And there's you, there's a, a video online where he came in the locker room. And he goes, "I don't give a fuck." He goes, "Opening face off, you just fight." So opening face off, they just attack their five players, start beating the shit out of them. It's like fucking um, placements. Uh, uh, it's like coming coming to the locker room with like AK 47s, like yelling at the guys. Uh, refs calling to wait, many- wait, 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 running in with AK 47s. Oh yeah, they're, they're the same owner, the same owner that uh, told the whole team to scrap, and he always wanted fighters on his squad. I think Dra- ja- uh, Josh Gratton was on the team at one point uh, uh 
nasty Morasty, Jeremy Oblonsky, who we also had on our podcast, who told that story about how he wanted them all fighting off the hop. But um, the ref was calling too many penalties on their team, and he came down out of the box, down to the ice, and had a conversation with the ref, and was basically like, "If you call one more penalty, I'm going to kill your family." Are you so, so they, it was just kidding? oh, buddy, hey, there, there, no there was no more penalties. There was no more penalties. There was no more fucking penalties. It, the, the KHL is, is is the craziest league on the planet, or at least at one point was. It's 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 changed a little bit, as I said. The stories go on for days. I kind of wish we were part of something like that. I wish like the league was kind of like that a little bit, just like, like the wild, just like West. NFL Blitz, legit like NFL Blitz. Yeah, no, it's one hundred percent. There's another video game too on like PlayStation, so, right? NFL Street or something like that. It was like yeah, uh, yeah. yeah I know they would do the storyline, and they would basically use like Lawrence Taylor as like uh as like the character that would develop throughout yeah, the league. Yeah, yeah. I, we're yeah, he, they the would break know, they would break something in their leg or in their body, right? And you'd have these decisions to make to like inject them and play through the <laughs> Oh, you fucking serious? I swear to God, this is kind of like uh, left wing Mar- City Blues. Is this, what is it? Co- yeah. Coach Kilmer? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah you got to yeah. stick him. Slowly closes the door for the running back. You that's shut your mouth if you knew it was good for you. Yeah. That's way I can what is he say? I control your transcripts. Yeah. that shit is. How much how often did Wit get it you know, get the sauce? So, was Witt, it so, Witt so was, did he ever actually find out? What yeah, was did he figure out? What so it I was? told the, I told the story on um, what was I was on PMT recently, and he was over there, and uh, he shows up to the rink one day. He was playing in Sochi where they had the Olympics, and he wasn't there for long. I think he lasted half a year just because it like they would make you stay in a, something called the Baza night before a game. You had to go there, be away from your family, and and take these rush uh, these like, army bunkers where you know they just it's like they want to control because they were paying you right yeah. yeah. Um, and he shows up to the rink one day and there's these metal detectors set up and he's like, well, there's never metal detectors up. And there's another Russian player at the time walking in as he was walking in and he's trying to gain as much information, but the guy broke in English. So long story short, Putin was in, in, on the ice Yeah. and he brought in like four or 500 people and there was no goalies out there. It was just him. And he would go skate around the ice. He'd put the puck in the empty net and then the four or 500 people would stand up and they'd start clapping. You're fly, you're you're lying. Lying. No, no. Wit, wit, wit told the story. And then, and then he would take it out of the net and he would skate down on the other end, put it in the, in the net. And then they would get up and start clapping <laughs> again. Oh yeah. Oh, that kind it of is. ego, bro. Could you imagine? Dude. Uh, but to be fair, though, and and listen, I'm no no Putin fan here. I think we're, we're we're well aware he's he's evil. But if you had that much money, I mean, it's kind of funny the stupid shit you could do, right? Yeah, no question. Like, what silly shit would you yeah. be doing if you had? I'd probably be doing that. I would just do pass sets in the <laughs> middle so? of the field. Yeah, just let people fill a stand up, stand up like, with sixty thousand. Pack Titan Stadium and just do some passes. Be like, fuck yeah, Luan. Like, you, just run, you just run a route tree with like yeah. somebody. You, you, yeah. I'm just throwing you the ball and everybody's yeah. doing a standing You out. buy an NFL team and then sign yourself as a, a quarterback, receiver, yeah, tight end. Semi pro like, with like Will Farrell when he's yeah. like the coach, the captain, and yeah, the GM yeah, yeah, or whatever. Yeah. But he wasn't allowed to go out to the ice to watch because it was blocked off. But where you would saw and get your sticks ready was where the Zamboni entrance was. So he was able to to get over there and and watch some of this and just see how how bizarre it was. But uh, um, we ha- we have a, a reoccurring guest, Tim Stapleton. I mentioned another guy, Mike Commodore. But all these all these friends of ours were able to go play in Russia, and and they all have very very similar stories of of how crazy it was in its own regard. Are these dudes retired too? Yeah, Tim Stapleton's retired. He's the one who told the story about uh, the the person living at his place. Um, I don't Com- Commodore was was Commodore. We we actually created a, an animation of it. He was just at some restaurant, and next thing you know, he's getting in a brawl where chairs are being thrown with these Russian dudes that he'd never even seen in his life. And had no clue as to why he was in a fist fight, but it was it was all going down. And, and we created an animation on our Spit and Chicklets YouTube channel of the whole story. Uh, we had uh, another guy, Josh Hennessy, who came on, and, and he told he actually went to that fighting team, but he wasn't a fighter. He was actually a decent player. And he he had his own experience with that owner to where he was hanging out with him and he befriended him. So he saw some of the antics. They showed up to the airport to pick him up and all of his gear and they had their guns on him and stuff. No shit. Yo, that's fucking wild. So you didn't, that's the KHL? That's the KHL. I, I only played one yeah. time in Russia. It was at the under 18 world championship and it was Yaroslav. And uh, the, the it was a, uh, Yaroslav, the locomotive was their team name. And it, uh, the town was, it, it was, it's, it's hard to see, you know, these there's nothing much it's tough all, out there yeah it's there, there wasn't like a blade of grass anywhere it was just like dirt and 
and rubbish and rubble. But I tell you what, as soon as you drove up and you saw the rink, it was immaculate. They had a bowling alley in it. They they had cheerleaders dancing, but you know, at, during the yeah. game, during the meanwhile, there's people just holding potatoes and vodka, wishing to God they had a penny to piss on. The this was the most intimidating building I ever played in the game. Game one, we played against Team Russia. We ended up getting beat, beat six three, and Ovechkin's a year younger, but he was so good at that time over there. Uh, he was playing a year up. Well, at least. Uh, maybe not according to his actual birth certificate. No, uh, yeah. that's a that, <laughs> yeah. that's a joke. As a that's, piece of paper, on yeah. twelve or whatever. Yeah. A conspiracy out there. And I, I think he had a hat trick that game, but we came out and it was exactly as you'd, you'd imagine the, the 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 guys in the big Russian coats and the Russian hats, yeah. like army style, and they're all gun standing. over the shoulder. They're the uh, no, I, we, they they didn't have guns on them, but they were all standing up the entire game, and it was a very very intimidating atmosphere, like Rocky it Four was, type shit, like Rocky, where Four. you're over in Russia and they just all the suits, and it's just yeah. all business. Yeah, yeah, shit in my diaper. Yeah, you eighteen, dude, going across, being under eighteen, and having to go. Into all places of Russia and the most intimidating shit. That's that's wild. I mean, you see that you see that video going around where it's like showing these the Russian kids just beating the shit out of each other. No, you know I've not seen that. It's like holding each other and they're just fighting. They're learning how to fight. But how old little. are they? They're little. They're little. And they're just kids. taking punches in the gut. Kids stuff? and they're learning how to fight like a hockey class. Things just learn how to pull back and forth and fight. And there's this one kid in the corner just beating the shit out of another kid. You talk about cultural differences. Like in America, we obviously live in a bubble, but like. If you go to the West Coast, it's like, okay, you guys got, you got dudes like that over there. And you go to the Northeast, it's like anywhere you hit a part of the country, it's like there's different people, different cultures. Yeah. I feel like Russia, it's like the same thing. Like, we don't do emotion here. Like, you don't feel pain anymore. Drink and vodka. You drink vodka age. and potatoes, and that's fucking what you do. It's, it's crazy. And it's like, what an American, stupid American thing to say of me. But like, <laughs> this shit is kind of wild. Yeah. I, I mean, as, as far as the, the politics and everything concerned, I don't really have a call. But just, just hearing these, just the hockey players going over there and experiencing this, it's, it's, it's obviously not normal to our standards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs>